Dina is a software engineer working in downtown Youngstown. And she's working on our fourth, on our fourth speech tonight, to tell her which why models. So please help me welcome Ying for the lecture. specific discipline like a mathematic or geometric biological any kind of these kind of models I believe some of uh, I believe we all remember some of these models when we were in school however as we grew up we gradually erase erase those models out of our memory and we left them to professionals and we become consumers. We can buy house, card, cars, and any kind of services that are built based on model. And we can easily rely on them and rely on information we can get from internet. However, sometimes the more information, data, opinion we gather from internet or from elsewhere, the more confused we become. So that's why today I'm going to remind you of model thinking and apply model to our life. Not just not to intimidate people around you, but to make yourself a better thinker to make better decisions. I can give you an example. So in 2009, Iceland has a, crisis, has a crisis in their currency. As individual investors, what should we do? Should we be panicked? So in order to answer that question, we can use two models. First model is the model of network failure. So banks, financial system, they are connected. If one of them fail, the possibility of the rest of them fail is increasing dramatically. So we can ask ourselves, do we have similar assets in our portfolio that are financially connected with Iceland. The other model we can use is supply and demand. For a price to change in, in the world wire, it, either the supply or demand side has to shift substantially. So if we pull out our memory and think about Iceland, or we can Google about Iceland, we would know that it is kind of isolated and it is very small. So based on that, we know that we can just relax. So a good model can be can, can a good model can simplify the problem and provide us a very clear logic to for us to reach our conclusion that we can convince ourselves. A good model has to be accurate. It has to have a clear boundary of what it can do and what it cannot do. Usually, it appears in a formula which has assumption, input, and output. That's why most of times, mathematics play a very important role in models. But don't worry, most of us can handle that, because even simple model can be very helpful. I'm going to show you another example. Sorry, I just <laughs> so, I'm going to show you a model that we all learn in our elementary school. So, we learn how to calculate the area, the surface area of a box and the volume of a box. We learned this in elementary school. And uh, to simplify the question, we just say this is a cube. So the edge of the cube, the length of the edge of the cube is 1. So in order, in order to calculate area, we know that for a cube, we have 6, 6, 6 sides. And each side, the area of it is the product of the width and the length. So it's 1 times 1, and there are 6 sides, so 6 is 6. 
and the bottom of it, we know it's the product of the width, the length, and the depth. So it's one times one times one equals two one. So what happens if we double the size of each edge? So we get a bigger, bigger box. With each size equals to two. So we can calculate area and volume in the same way. Area will be two times two times six. It will be 24. And volume will be two times two times two. It will be eight. So now we completed our model. What conclusion can we draw from that? So we figure out that as the box getting bigger, the volume and area scales differently. The area scales four times, while the volume scales eight times. So now we can use this model to explain why in the real world we prefer to make a bigger ship. Because making a bigger ship is more cost efficiently <coughs> as if we can simplify a ship as a cube, then as the ship getting bigger, the amount of goods it can carry is growing faster than the steels we need to make it. So that's how we implement a simple geometric model to the real life. A good model could also be applied to multiple domains. Now I'm going to use the exact same model to, to explain you why the metabolism of an elephant is slower than the metabolism of a mouse. So we let's consider a mouse as a small box. So it's a, it's a mouse. And <coughs> consider an elephant can be put in a bigger box. So what we can learn from this model is the elephant is much more bigger than the mouse in terms of its size, its volume. However, it is not that big, bigger than a mouse in terms of, of its, its skin area. However, animals through metabolism, they generate heat and uh, release those heat from their, from their skin. So if an elephant can generate heat as fast as a mouse, <coughs> then it's going to explode. <laughs> but in the real world, actually, it, so no elephant blows up. So we can conclude, our conclusion is, elephant must have a slower metabolism compared with mouse. So we just solve a problem, use a simple mess, a geometric problem without touching, or we solve a biological problem without touching biology that much. So that's the agility of the model. <laughs> so fellow members, those members and the guests, I wish my illustration today could help to reboost your interest in models. So models shouldn't just be something we learn in classroom in order to, uh, to complete our exam. It should be something it should be a tool that can help us to solve real life problems as long as we reconnect it to, to, to apply it to the real life scenario. And uh, it's not easy to apply models, but it's worth trying and the practice makes perfect. So one day, probably you can explain the world to your children with, the, with your own models. Thank you. Thank you.